In this video, we're going to be building some industrial pipelines and conduits. Hey guys, welcome back to Eric's Hobby Workshop. Today we're going to be tackling something that is a very important visual component of any industrial or science fiction scene. If you've ever been to any sort of industrial facility in the real world, you'll notice that pipelines and conduits are ubiquitous. They're everywhere. They connect one piece of machinery with a holding tank with another piece of machinery, and they're kind of the glue that binds the whole thing together as a functional and realistic industrial structure. Uh, they come in all shapes and sizes. I'm going to show you just a couple methods today. They're pretty easy methods but you can really go crazy with this and hopefully you get a little bit of inspiration from this and you know you make your own right and make your own so yeah without further ado let's jump right into it we'll start this project with some graphics medium chipboard this stuff is one of my favorite crafting materials of all time it's cheap it's inexpensive it's lightweight and it's easy to cut with a craft knife or a hobby knife uh, if you guys want a package of your own I'll put a link down in the description for an affiliate link I start by cutting this into some strips. These are half inch strips and what these are going to do is they're going to form the basis of the construction for the supports for my pipeline. I cut through these with an X-Acto knife. You see I'm making mini passes here that allows you to get a clean cut. Don't rush it, don't use scissors, and you should get some nice even strips like these. Once you've got a couple of these bad boys all cut out, use your hot glue gun or some white glue like Aline's tacky glue and glue them into an I-beam type shape. These are super useful basic construction pieces that you can really build anything with, but I'm gonna show you a cool method here to build a pipeline support. As you can see, we make sort of an H shape, and you could stop right here and have these as your pipeline supports if you were in a hurry or if you wanted a more simple look. I'm just using the roll from the inside of an aluminum foil roll here to show you. But we're going to add some embellishment to these and see if we can give them a little bit more of an elaborate and almost gothic like design to tie them in with some of my other terrain. So I cut some half inch strips and cut those on an angle to make sort of a beveled fin type piece. And then I use some more half inch strips to add some detail and add that on the outside of the fin like piece as well to get these nice little feet type details. And this adds a ton of detail to the piece without too much extra effort uh, that really sets this piece apart. Next I'm going to use my hobby knife or my craft knife to cut some sections of this pipe. As I mentioned this cardboard roll is one of the dense rolls from the inside of a roll of aluminum foil or wax paper. And these are the best type of rolls to craft with. They knock toilet paper rolls and paper towel rolls out of the park. It's really no competition. Next I'm going to use some half inch chipboard to add the look of a coupling, making it look like this is more than one piece of pipe fitted together. This adds some visual detail as well. I'm adding some extra little pieces of chipboard inside a, another beam shaped piece that's slightly larger and that's going to cap off my pipeline support. Next I'm going to do a platform for the top. I start with a 3 inch by 9 inch piece of chipboard and make a half inch sort of frame and then cut that out with my X-Acto knife. This took kind of a while because you really need to get these sharp corners when you're cutting a square out of the chipboard. But once you've done it, if you've done it properly, it just falls right out. And now I didn't do anything particularly fancy in this case. I just used some Eileen's tacky glue and uh, glued it to another piece of chipboard. And that was that. So you guys, you guys might be looking at my platforms there and thinking, wow, Eric, that's not a very inspired design for a platform. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. When I was designing my uh, upright supports, I was very careful about the height and the tolerance and everything there. I wanted to be very precise so it would be flush with the previous piece I made, which was that sort of uh, industrial build of all cardboard. 
and uh, and so I didn't reinforce or layer those sheets as much as I could of those top deck areas because I was concerned about the height being thrown off. And as it turned out, uh, the height the height's off anyways because I just I'm not that precise of a crafter. It may look from 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 the magic of the screen, it may look to you guys like I'm super precise, but I'm really I'm not that precise. And what can I say? Uh, I did my best, and sometimes your best is not good enough. And that's 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 part of the process guys not everything's perfect okay uh, and 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 you guys have probably figured this out but I'm making tutorials here but sometimes I haven't done this stuff before like if I did everything once before to troubleshoot it and then I made a second time to do a tutorial well I'd never get anything done you would get 50% less content at least probably exponentially less or maybe not, I don't know. I'm not a mathematician, okay? I'm a simple man, I'm figuring things out as I go, and you guys are invited to the process. That's part of what I do here, okay? I'm showing you inside the Hobby Workshop. That's the name of the channel, Eric's Hobby Workshop. It's not Eric's Polished Every Time Never Screws Up channel, okay? It's Eric's Hobby Workshop. It's exactly what it sounds like. Um, let's get back to the build. Next I'm going to use some foam core to cut some supports for where the pipeline runs along the ground. This is a fairly simple design, just angled on the sides with a circular shape cut out of the center. Once I have a bunch of those cut out, I cut out a chipboard base and then clad the edges with some chipboard. This has the double purpose of adding some detail and also hiding the foam core underneath, which has kind of a strange texture. When I've got a bunch of them done, as you can see, it'll hold my pipeline nicely like this. I bought a bunch of extra rolls of aluminum foil from the dollar store so I could rob them of their tubes. These tubes are great and I'm saving the aluminum foil in case you're worried about waste. I have another use for those which will be in a future video. Get all that sticky stuff off there. It's that same sticky stuff that's like that holds a cologne ad shut in a magazine. You know what I mean? Anyways, I used some brown packing tape to cover this tube, and what that'll do is hide the distinctive spiral pattern that gives it away as a cardboard tube. And next, I use some PVC piping segments, just the corner pieces, and I scrape away all the letters that are on them to suit the scale a little bit better. Next, I hot glue that together and add a little bit more of that brown tape just to join the pieces together and to unify the texture. And this piece is going to be the transition piece from my raised pipeline with the pipeline that runs along the ground. You can make as many of these as you want, I just made one for this particular example. But here you can see I'm using another piece of half inch chipboard to make a coupling piece that will allow one piece of tubing to insert into the other and join them together. This piece here is going to support the piece because it has a little bit of balance issues. So now I'm going to make the conduit. This conduit is made from paper straws that are covered in the same brown paper tape. And this conduit I'm making here has that really distinctive look of the ones that you see uh, running in parallel to each other where they all turn the corner at the same time on sort of a crisp right angle and I really like the way that looks. It has a really distinctive look and I thought it was something I definitely needed to capture in this build. So I made one of these. It's kind of a fun little shape and the cool thing about this is when you have four pipelines or conduits running in parallel to each other it can also be used as a walkway. So there's a benefit of that as well. And there you go. Pretty cool, eh? So next I'm going to glue my transitional piece onto its support to make it a little bit more stable. And you end up with something like this. I'm also going to make some supports for this conduit piece just by making some little H's of this half inch chipboard. And the key here is to make them so they can stand up on their own. And so one of them I doubled up and made into this square shape, which obviously stands up on its own. But for the other one, I just hot glued a 3D printed barrel to the base, which gave it some stability. 
And now I'm going to Mod Podge all of the pieces. Mod Podge is a white glue with a sealant in it, and this is going to seal all the edges of the paper and allow these things to take a watery wash as well as increasing their durability. This is a super important step if you're working with paper, cardboard, chipboard, anything like that. You can mix some paint into the Mod Podge as well, and that'll act as a base coat if you want, but since I'm going to spray can this stuff, you don't need to. So I used some Krylon black textured spray paint to spray paint these pieces and what the textured spray paint does is gives it a bit of a more pebbled finish that's going to give it a little bit of extra texture and that's going to help in the weathering stage that we're about to do. So once all this black paint has gone on, I'm going to come in with a brown acrylic paint and paint this all everything a nice burnt umber color. After I painted it, I realized I wanted a little bit more detail on the pipeline pieces. So I used some cereal board, some half inch cereal board to add some strips around the outside just to add sort of a, a double detail to the thing. And in select pieces, I used my hole punch to punch out some of the chipboard to make these tiny little buttons that are going to be used as rivets. So picking them up with the tip of my craft knife, I dipped them in some hot glue or some, uh, some crazy glue. Super glue. I haven't said crazy glue in years. Oh yeah, super glue. And then you can see I get a nice riveted look. These are not the ideal rivets because they fray a little bit. And I realized I had an issue here. Look at this. So I can barely fit this in as is. And when I add another layer to it, it's even tighter. So if I were to put rivets on there, there's no way it's getting through the pieces. This is just one of these things that comes about when you plan things poorly, which uh, I'm kind of notorious for doing. But that's all right. So yeah, next I'm gonna dry brush with some acrylic silver paint. And this is gonna bring out the metallic look that we're really looking for on top of that nice warm red brown burnt umber. And uh, you could leave it here if you were in a hurry or if you just wanted something more simple and it's not a bad look. I used to paint towards the beginning of my channel. This is how I paint some things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up this watery orange wash and wash everything. And this is going to give a nice rusty coating. And this rusty appearance uh, looks really bright when it's fresh, but it will fade once it dries, as you can see. And it's a nice, subtle, sort of rusty finish. And next we're going to do some chipped paint. And to do that, we're going to use this latex chipping fluid. This stuff is usually used by watercolor artists to block in their pale colors but it works really great if you use a piece of kitchen sponge and then just dab it all over your pipe in a random way. The more rust you want to show, the more you put on. If you want very little rust, then you're very sparing with this and vice versa. And it's kind of fun to try to think in reverse here and try to work your mind around what it's going to look like when everything you cover is shown and vice versa. So I use a nice cream colored paint here and paint all of my pipeline bits up. And then with a stiff brush, I pull away that chipping fluid and you can see that beautiful chipping appearance underneath. And this is the most gratifying part for me. It starts to look really realistic and really cool. Next, I use some burnt umber paint, very thin and make some long thin lines coming down like drips from the chipped places and some orange pieces as well. I use a nice orange wash to add a nice rusty appearance. And that's, uh, here's an example of a mistake I made. So this one I did it vertical, but it actually connects as a corner piece in my modular system I was working on here. Uh, so all the drips are sideways. Guys, it's okay to screw up. It's okay. It's okay to screw up. That's all I have to say. Write that somewhere in your crafting space. You can't see, but just out of frame here, there's a, there's a whiteboard on the wall and uh, there's a message on it that says, well, my wife wrote I love you on it, which is helpful, but it also says it's okay to screw up. And I need to, I need to see that. I need to, I need to reinforce that message with myself because sometimes, you know, I can be remarkably cruel to myself. And guys, Bullying is not okay. It's not okay. It's not good. But a lot, and people know that. People know that. I feel like I'm, I'm saying something obvious here. But one thing that people always forget is that includes yourself. 
don't bully yourself, okay? You guys are gems, we're all learning, and we're killing it, right? We're killing it. Let's get back to it. So we're just about done here. The last thing I'm gonna do is add a black wash to the recesses that'll really make these things pop on the table. And with that, we'll call it done. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the button. I feel like I should be an auctioneer for this part. Like, comment, share, subscribe to the notification bell. Notification bell. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, if you want to support the channel, please check out my Patreon in the link below and consider supporting me on there. That really is the most direct and best way to support me. And all my previous patrons, I super mega much really appreciate you guys. Uh, it's what keeps the fire of inspiration burning inside me when I when I see that my Patreon is growing and that people appreciate what I do. Uh, let me tell you, it just uh, it warms the cockles. Okay, and we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop. <laughs>